created by the factory members. So starting with this event, uh, I would uh, request our president uh, of the IIT Delhi Lumina Association, Mr. Kalpain Shukla, to please give us the welcome address. Thank you. Thank you, Natasha. A uh, very good morning, afternoon, and evening to all participants. It is my pleasure to welcome all the participants and attendees across the globe for today's event. We are aware that you have given a part of your Sunday holiday to join us for this program. We sincerely appreciate it. I welcome the dignitaries who have joined us on this very special day. Professor K.K. Pant, Dean Faculty, IIT Delhi Alum. Dr. Anil Wali, who will join us shortly, Managing Director of FIT, Foundation for Innovation and Technology Transfer, IIT Delhi. Professor D. Subarao, recently retired Professor of Chemical Engineering Department. I'm happy to welcome all the faculty awardees and the winners of the startup contest. Much as I am tempted to much as I am tempted to name and welcome them, I reserve the privilege for Professor Pant and Dr. Wali to announce their names in the upcoming sessions. It's an honor to have all the alumni faculty awardees joining in this event. Today is the closing session within the series of events organized on occasion of the World Teachers Day, wherein UNESCO had defined the theme as teachers at the heart of educational recovery. Therefore, all the events have a common underlying thread, and that is to celebrate the contribution and success of IIT Delhi alumni faculty. On 5th October, IIT Delhi Alumni Association organized the launch event that was graced by the Honorable Minister of State for External Affairs and Education, Dr. Rajkumar Ranjan Singh, as the chief guest. On 8th October, we organized fun and music event, primarily driven by the IITD alumni faculty and family members. While we as alumni of the Institute celebrate our teachers on every such occasion, there is no denial that each one of us remains eternally grateful to them for the indelible impression that many of them make in our life. The joy of coming together multiplies when we celebrate the successful journeys of our own alumni who have spent their time pursuing a career in academics, teaching, and research as faculty members. Our alumni have done sterling work at universities across the globe, right from the conventional areas of the olden days to the latest cutting edge technological developments. Our alumni faculty members have registered their very strong presence. There may not be an institute of repute where our alumni faculty aren't present. In return, millions of students have benefited from the cumulative efforts and contribution of this faculty. Today, we are blessed with such a large number of alumni faculty that selecting a few names for felicitation in itself remains a very challenging task. While each one is uniquely placed in his or her own space, we still make efforts to reach conclusion and award a few of them. Very soon, we shall have the opportunity to hear the names of these meritorious faculty members. Teachers have lifelong impact on shaping up of the character and persona of their students. Many remain as role models, and at times, they enjoy iconic presence in the individual's entire life. We decided to pick up one such dimension, where the faculty indeed plays the role of a mentor and a motivator. That is when the faculty works with a startup or a team of enthusiastic youngsters who need critical inputs at various stages of their journey. IIT Delhi is a vibrant hub of entrepreneurial ecosystem and hundreds of successful businesses started their ambitious journey from the hallowed portals of this institute. There are numerous ways in which an aspirant receives different kinds of inputs from the campus. One of the most critical constituents amongst many 
is the initial stage guidance and hand holding while the thought process crystallizes and the idea begins to transform into an action plan and progresses towards result oriented teamwork there are many examples of the faculty associated with such ideas not only making efforts to generate the resources but also contributing towards financial sustenance during the turbulent times however many such stories and contributions remain unnoticed or often get registered as normal behavior as expected from a benevolent faculty this year we are making a small effort to recognize such contributions and therefore we have introduced alumni faculty driven or mentored startup contest we shall hear from a few of these contestants who have been mentored by specific faculty member at the end we shall also felicitate the faculty members whose efforts have produced such impressive outcome with these few words i once again thank everyone for joining us and hand over to natasha to take the session forward thank you thank you so much mr shukla now i would like to invite professor k k pant dean faculty iit delhi to give the opening address yeah thank you natasha and uh, good morning uh, uh, to all who are uh, watching it from the us and attending so i'm thankful to all of you and uh, good evening right from india so it's a matter of pride for me also to attend this session on behalf of iit delhi as a dean faculty uh, it's a pleasure that uh, the alumni association is doing a great job right uh, and uh, during the past right if you look at two three months right a lot of the activities have been done and uh, what teachers they have right that has been celebrated so it's a wonderful that uh, right the alumni right our alumni are always active and the association is doing a wonderful job now many things are to be done if you look at right uh, the we have already if you look at the data the iit delhi is among the top 50 right institutes in the world and uh, well known institute in india so always we are right among top 3 but uh, many things are to be done if you look at the quality faculty members right we need the more and more faculty member where the alumni right uh, needs to do right and our support the from the alumni is required that is where where right we need to do that how the faculty members can be right hired and uh, those who are right uh, the outside india the we always request to all right who are in the academic and uh, right doing or the industry that if you find the good fact right uh, the aspiring faculty prospective faculty who can right come india and willing to join iit so i think we will always encourage those activities so this is also another opportunity when we talk about right to serve our right uh, the alma mater and uh, the way we do right the lot of things where you talk about the endowment fund when you talk about the startup activity creation of the new jobs creation of the the new kind of basic infrastructure within the campus right and uh, providing the support so that is the alumni is doing a lot of right activities and providing a wonderful right infrastructure to iit delhi campus you know now that more than 17 unicorns are right that is the what iit delhi has produced how more than 1000 startup activities are going on and thank you professor wali also right who is taking right a lot of initiatives in order to right activate these kind of startup activities to multiple uh, fora uh, we also look at that uh, in what way right where the more than 50000 right engineers scientists right technicians have been produced by iit so where are they they at present right and uh, the database which is already right available but we need to strengthen it further if you look at the right money right uh, where are they and if you are able to connect with them right each, each every whether it is the btech mtech or phd or ms students so we need to connect them right and get a more and more a kind of right when you talk about bring them to the iit delhi uh, forum under different categories so it is now you know that world is now many things are being done under the online mode so things have become easier also so we are now right at this today also we are able to connect with all of you because of this kind of right new changes in the uh, right uh, infrastructure which is available to us so 
again, I would like to write, uh, stress there that we need to hire, we need to provide more and more endowment funds in order to develop the basic infrastructure. So IIT Delhi has a lot of, if you look at the, from uh, right 60 years before. So presently we are celebrating our Diamond Jubilee and lot of things have been done, right? Lot of infrastructure changes. So I request all of you to visit, right? Those who are in abroad. So visit us, right? Uh, and uh, look at the infrastructure what has been developed uh, during the last, right? Uh, 20 or 30 years. So a lot of changes have come in the IIT Delhi campus itself. We have a very good facility of a kind of nano research facility central research facility and lot of say infrastructure campus which is now in Sanupa, Jajjar. A lot of lands are available nowadays. Now we need to develop some kind of a new infrastructure when you talk in terms of the R&D facilities, maintenance of those kind of right equipment. For that also the support of the alumni is very important. If you look at in terms of the development of IIT Delhi over the right when we talk about the last 60 years, it's exponential growth. Right. And our alumni, they have done a very good job. They are now on the right at all positions, if you look out, and they have conquered the world also in different category. And this is again, right, the credit goes to right the mentors kind of mentorship which they have got from our right uh, distinguished faculty. Right. And I'm happy that alumni is celebrating this right uh, alumni right faculty award. And which is also most needed because the kind of recognition with the faculty member right gets during right whatever the service he has done and creation of these kind of yeah, right brilliant minds so the kind of right the development of those right brains which are right already a kind of cream of cream when you say when they enter to the IIT system and they gradually over the year of four or five years right they develop those kind of skills and this skill development is not only because of the right a kind of mentorship but because of the kind of the right the infrastructure which is available so a good infrastructure good kind of right the environment is also very important along with the kind of facilities which we provide and for that i think always the alumni support is very important so with this short uh, brief introduction i once again thank you everyone for joining this meeting and uh, thank you uh, mr kalpin suplaji for providing me the opportunity to attend this meeting so thank you thank you everyone Uh, thank you, Professor Pant. Uh, I would also request you to please uh, announce the award winners. I think that names are not with me. I, I, I think the names are there on the email, but that I names can are I, either Dr. Wally because it's a start I, I, startup I, awards. I think that is with Dr. Wally, I feel so. No, sir, it is not startup. The faculty award winners are to be announced by you. But in case if you do not have it right now, I'll forward it to you in a in a second. Yeah. Please. Or, or Satish. Hello. Hello, sir. I do it, sir. Satish, can you forward the names to Professor Pant immediately? Okay, 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 okay. Uh, I can type it in the chat directly to. Uh... You can WhatsApp me. Uh -huh. That's or, why I was under the impression that Dr. Wali is announcing the award. Sir, Dr. Wali is announcing the award okay. Okay. contestant. So, for so I got the name now. So it's yeah, my yeah. pleasure, right? Uh, who has been our director also, Professor R. P. Surohi, at the right uh, distinguished faculty award. So. It's a pleasure for me because I had been right uh, uh, as a faculty member here when he was the director of IIT Delhi. He is a well-known physicist, right? Uh, so I hope Professor Sirohi is attending the meeting. If that is there, I would like to see him also. So, so it's a pleasure for me to announce Professor R.P. Sirohi as the Distinguished Right Faculty Award uh, for today. And so there are two more. Uh, yeah, another I got the name is I think I did not get the second name so far. So I'm still waiting for the other name. Yeah, Dr. N.K. Gupta, Padmasri Dr. N.K. Gupta. Again, it's a pleasure for me uh, to announce this award, right, uh, to Dr. or Professor N.K. Gupta, who is the Padmasri, and it's a pleasure for me to announce his name. So I got the second name now. So 
if professor nk gupta is there yeah professor nk gupta i can see him yeah good evening professor nk gupta thanks a lot thank you yeah. it's a pleasure for me to see you here again yeah yeah <laughs> perhaps you know that uh, recently drdo awarded me and uh, yeah. the third name now i got is professor pawan sinha so again it's my pleasure to announce the name of professor pawan sinha right at the alumni award distinguished alumni of faculty awards right and uh, i did not re uh, got the opportunity to talk to him but if he is there right uh, would be happy to see him also i am thank you very much that yeah. i'm deeply yeah. honored okay okay so i heard your name but uh, we have not met before so it's a pleasure for me to see you now right and heartiest congratulations to all the awardees right and uh, i think we would like to interact with all these distinguished faculty right because the kind of right the, the service to the nation service to the right educational society which all of you have done it's a matter of pride for iit delhi also so thank you very much and heartiest congratulations to all the awardees thank you very much thank you Uh, thank you so much, Professor Pant. And uh, so there's one more name if you could uh, do the honors. Sir, sir, you are on mute, sir, Professor Pant. My pleasure to announce the another name as the promising faculty of the year, Professor Mosham, who is in now in Computer Service and uh, Computer Science and Engineering, and uh, my colleague. So, Professor Mosham, are you there? Yes, I am here. It's an honor to receive yeah, hello, you all. Nice Thank you, you very much. Awesome, awesome, and heartiest congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. He's very active researcher and uh, right, well known in his right research community. So, congratulations. Uh, thank you so much, Professor Pant, and congratulations to all the winners. Uh, since we have almost everyone with us, we would like to uh, hear from all the winners. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Professor Rajpal Singh Sarui couldn't join us, but just to give a little brief about him. So, uh, after completing the post MSc diploma in the applied optics and PhD in physics from IIT Delhi, Professor Sarui joined IIT Madras as assistant professor in uh, mechanical department in 1971, and became professor of physics in 1979. In December 2020. He two uh, thousand. Uh, he joined IIT Delhi as director as superannuated in April two thousand five. He is a fellow of INA, NASI, OSI, OSA, SPI, and member to several other bodies. He is one of the founders of Indian Laser Association. He has authored and co-authored four fifty research papers and fourteen books. He supervised twenty five PhD theses. Seven MS theses and numerous B Tech, M Tech, M Sc project works. He has received twenty-one awards. Notable among them are Padam Shri by the Government of India, Gaber Award by S P E I U S A, and Distinguished Alumni Award by the I I T Delhi. Uh, unfortunately, he couldn't join us. But uh, moving on to the next winner, we uh, have with us Professor Narendra Kumar Gupta. Uh, He did his PhD in applied uh, mechanics from IIT Delhi in 1972. Uh, Indian National Science Academy senior scientist. He has men uh, he has mentored nearly 40 PhD in 75 MTEC students. Has published extensively in Indian and uh, international journals and has been on the editorial boards of over a dozen international and national journals. He has been president of. most indian scientific societies and chaired number of national committees of uh, drdo dst csir ar db national academics and scientific societies he has received several national and international recognitions and awards including padma shri in 1991 uh, i would request professor nk gupta to please share few words with us Can you hear me, please? Yes. Okay. <laughs> you left nothing for me to say. <laughs> so nice that to hear all of you, <laughs> Professor Pant, 
it's a, <clears throat> I thank you very much and feel humbled about, for this honor that you have given me. <clears throat> I feel also a bit honored that you, my name was included with Siro, Professor Sirohi and Professor Sina, both highly known personalities. And uh, actually, <clears throat> most of the time, I wanted to be a teacher only. Although the positions I got, all that you have sort of narrated, they came, they were all where I could sort of project the country. I could project certain kind of preparations or some kind of what we are planning to go ahead with. And this was the job for which I accepted these, these positions. But eventually, I always wanted to be a teacher. The, I don't know how it came up, but it came up right from the time of partition. At that time, I was about five years. And uh, what came to me was just to, I mean, grow in a way in which I really grown, not talking of money at all. I did so many projects for the country. So many countries have awarded for helping them in some way or the other. <laughs> it was nice seeing Professor Sinha. I don't know if he has seen me in <laughs> Massachusetts. There also, I spent a lot of time with uh, Professor V.S. Bikki. And uh, we've been together for several years. Both of us were declared as uh, within total of five people who were selected from the scientists in this area. My area was impact engineering, which the, the International Society of Impact Engineering had uh, worked out. <laughs> Similarly, the best part of it are what I cherished the most was that uh, speaking to people, to, to boys, to students, working with them, being with them most of the time. And uh, those who have passed out, working for their problems, and the kind of response that I got, the love and affection that I got from the students, most of them, I mean, this is what I cherish the most. And I thank the Institute for letting me be a professor, teaching professor, not being paid professor, but teaching professor right up to today. And uh, I am also grateful to academies for supporting me, whatever I did, wherever I went, German Academy, British Academy, Russian Academy, all of them. I mean, they supported whenever they wanted me to be there. And I spent time during vacations there. And most of the time during vacation, otherwise I spent with the students at IIT Delhi. And here also within last few, I mean, every year, the RDO, DST, whatever it is, they also keep on awarding, I don't know why, told them many times that I'm over now, please let me be there. But most of the things, designs or whatever is being done, I participate without charging even a penny from anybody. And uh, I thank you very much for the words you said for me. And uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you and congratulations once again to uh, Professor Gupta. Uh, next, we have with us Professor Pavan Sinha, uh, who is 1988 Computer Science and Engineering, MIT. Professor Sinha's contributions span from neuroscience AI to public health. He founded Project Prakash in 2005 
with the twin objective of treating children with severe visual impairments and also understanding learning and plasticity in the brain while also transforming the lives of over 500 blind children by bringing them the gift of sight professor sina is a recipient of several awards including the pe case us government's highest award for young scientist his research papers have appeared in leading scientific journals i would request professor sina to please share a few words with us thank you natasha uh, thank you dr shukla uh, and thank you iit delhi alumni association for this great honor and congratulations to professor sirohi professor gupta and professor mosam i'm humbled to be in their company for this recognition um iit delhi occupies a very special place in my heart not only because i did my studies my undergraduate st studies there but because i grew up on the iit delhi campus my father uh mr k p sinha uh used to work in iit delhi so right from birth i grew up on campus and i have such fond memories of the place uh being woken up uh on summer mornings with the calls of the peacock uh and iit always felt like a little oasis in the chaos of delhi uh increasingly as the years passed even as delhi got more and more crowded the iit campus always provided this beautiful safe haven and it hardly changed its its character and i'm grateful for that uh, when i moved from india to the us to mit for my graduate studies it didn't really feel like very much of a change iit and mit are close cousins in many aspects in the quality of the students in the quality of the teachers in the focus on excellence in research and teaching and i have come to appreciate my time uh, at both places and the inspiration that the people that i met at both institutions have given me whether they are students or whether they are faculty members or staff members i'm tremendously grateful for how these two institutions have shaped my life i now have the privilege of leading the mit india program this is mit's international outreach specifically directed towards india and as part of the mit india program one of the hopes that i have is that we will be able to further the natural links between mit and indian institutions and at the top of my list of indian institutions to deepen our relationship with would be iit delhi in fact we have already started uh, conversations with faculty members at iit delhi to try to see what kinds of initiatives would make the most sense to enhance interactions not just at the level of the faculty but also at the level of students and i hope that we can carry forward this conversation in a more robust way and i would love to have your uh, suggestions and your contribution institutions on this effort so back to the present i feel greatly honored thank you again uh, and uh, i i hope that my paths will cross with you in person in the not too distant future thank you uh, thank you and congratulations once again professor sena uh, next we have uh, with us the next winner uh, professor mosam Uh, who is 2001 BTech in Computer Science and Engineering from IIT Delhi? Uh, Professor Mosam is the founding head of School of Artificial Intelligence, along with being a professor of computer science at IIT Delhi. He is also an affiliated professor at University of Washington, Seattle. He has over 100 archival papers to his credit, along with a book and two best paper awards. Professor Mosam was awarded the 
triple AI senior member status in 2015 for his long term participation in AI and distinction in the field of artificial intelligence. Uh, I congratulate Professor Mossam and I request you to please share a few words with us. Thank you very much. Uh, it's an honor to be here. It's, uh, I'm humbled as um, to receive this award and especially in company of such illustrious seniors of mine. Uh, you know, I'm too young to be on this uh, forum, but thanks nevertheless. You know, I was thinking when uh, Mr. Shukla yesterday told me about the award, I was thinking that, you know, I do put a lot of effort in teaching, but anything that we do well today often has roots in somebody teaching us that thing right once upon a time. And in my particular case, I was taught teaching in some ways by three of my mentors. And I think today, before I say anything more, I want to just think of them uh, and give the credit of this award to them. The first was my mom, who would uh, never give me answer to any question when I was a child. She would always show me the path and uh, would encourage me to find the answer myself. She was a math uh, researcher herself. And her sensitivity on understanding uh, uh, my uh, emotions and whether I have understood or not without me telling her, I think uh, gave me the appreciation of how important it is to be a good teacher. And then later my PhD advisor, Professor Dan Weld, I always remember that he would never teach the same class twice. He would always be dissatisfied with his lecture slides, his work. He would always read more before every class, even if he has taught the same class 10 times before. And that spirit of, you know, uh, that attention to detail and that uh, dissatisfaction with one's own work and the constant uh, uh, focus on improving it really is something that I took from him. And finally, my mentor, Professor Oren Edzioni, who is currently the uh, director of Allen Institute of AI in Seattle, you know, he showed me the importance of it's not just teaching. It is also how much one can engage the students by stories, by anecdotes, by uh, jokes. It's not just the content. It is very important to make sure that you know students are with you. Um, and I think those three influences really shaped my own teaching philosophy. And I thank my mentors uh, as I think about you know my teaching abilities. Um, uh, just I want to say a few words about myself. I came back from Seattle uh, in 2013. I was a faculty member there at University of Washington, and I came back here at IIT Delhi. I always wanted to serve my motherland and uh, was really excited. But one of my real challenges at the time uh, was whether I would be able to create a successful research career sitting in India. Uh, and this was before the AI revolution happened in the last two years. So, I, I, I mean, I'm happy to report that we have been hanging in there. We have been working very hard. We have developed a very strong team of not just myself, but a very strong group of collaborators at IIT Delhi who work in the field of artificial intelligence. And noticing our efforts, uh, the administration of IIT Delhi has always been has also been highly supportive to our endeavors, and uh, they we have been able to create a, a newly found school of artificial intelligence. And in the school of artificial intelligence, we have been uh, bringing in a multidisciplinarity at the core, and we have brought together forty researchers in IIT Delhi, uh, working in different departments, all engaged in the field of AI in some ways, either core AI or application of AI to various. Uh, verticals like healthcare, material discovery, manufacturing optimization, robotics, and so on, into a single platform. And you know, I'm really encouraging all the faculty members to collaborate, and uh, hopefully, new things will come out as time goes on. You know, I just heard Professor Pawan Sinha talk about MIT uh, and outreach and collaboration with Indian academia in very same ways. You know, at School of AI, we have been uh, thinking about all the various ideas around the box, uh, within the box, uh, you know, outside, completely outside the box of how to attract the best talent from the world back to India and join School of AI, how to really push the AI research in India forward, and how to really get India at the top five, or if not the top three of the countries where uh, we really deservedly belong, but we are a little bit behind. And so any uh, support that uh, any of you or alumni at large could bring uh, in that context, I'll be really, really interested in hearing your ideas and uh, uh, taking your contributions. Uh, and you know, if we bring together all the stakeholders, we can really make a concerted effort. And that's what you know the goal that we have and I have been working on. So that's my short story uh, in the last year or so about School of AI. Um, and uh, if anything, not, if nothing, we will definitely be a really strong center for research 
in AI in the coming years. Uh, uh, and that is something I'm deeply committed to. I really thank um, the IIT Delhi Alumni Association for thinking of me and choosing me. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Mawson. Uh, and congratulations to all the winners. And it was glad hearing from you. And thank you for finding time for us and joining us today. Uh, now, uh, before beginning with the second part of today's event, which is the startup uh, presentation, the startups which have been mentored by the faculties, I would like to welcome my fellow EC member, Mr. Vivek Batra, who has 35 years of experience in different roles in varied industries, uh, from auto, uh, real estate engineering, to his current role as a CEO of Amrit Corporation, which is a specialized dairy production company. Uh, I would like to welcome to the forum, uh, Mr. Vivek Patra, please share some words with us. Virtual meet is totally a very disorienting concept uh, for me. I haven't still got used to it because herein I am talking to actually really talking to a, an electronic device, whether it be laptop or notebook or whatever, and I am basically listening to myself. So it feels very, very funny and very strange uh, because I am uh, a person who believes in the real relation and in flesh and uh, bone, flesh and blood uh, contact. So that we meet people and that's basically the premise of such program. But anyway, because the environment doesn't permit, we have no options. So we have to live with it. So a very uh, good evening to respected uh, faculty and uh, my dear friends. First of all, I would like to congratulate all the faculty members who have been felicitated here. Uh, big congratulations and thank you for uh, wonderful work that uh, you are doing for uh, uh, India in uh, general. So previously we were talking about the brain brain, but you are the, you're the ones who are really giving all of us uh, brains to be used in uh, betterment of the society. Uh, that was a couple of days back when I was uh, with my team, I was given this task of uh, evaluating these projects be done by the faculty. And it was a very, very, uh, I would say, quite uh, confused. Uh, because in our uh, culture, teachers are our gurus. Whether they have taught it or not taught it, or whether they are to us or whether they are to us. But it was uh, a big tussle. It was like Mahabharat. <clears throat> so as I say, that any given period of time, there is Mahabharat, and then you have to Cross a Lakshman Rekha. So, like it was actually Mahabharata, and it was actually the time when I crossed this moral Lakshman Rekha. Because for last, for about uh, 18 years of my education, or our education, average, so we were being evaluated. So, it was a totally 60 degree turn where we would be evaluating our uh, evaluators. But uh, I tell you what, we really enjoyed uh, doing this. So it was a totally different role we have played and enjoyed. And uh, then uh, we requested uh, the faculty, please send us your uh, project. Uh, I have, uh, as uh, Natasha suggested in form, that I have more than 35 years of experience in various roles and various industries. Very interestingly, mentoring has been always my passion. Though I didn't get much of uh, uh, option in this, but uh, again, very interestingly, my first mentoring was when I think I was about 13 years of age. So I don't want to burden you with the detail that how I mentored this person and how it went. But uh, over the last couple of years, I have picked up this uh, mentoring role very recently. Now we are into uh, dairy industry uh, uh, in general and uh, in the beverage industry, dairy based beverage. So there are a number of 
youngsters who are coming to us and in addition to helping them out in providing a product i have also taken this task on myself to mentor them so that they can stand on their feet so that is how i am uh, contributing my mentoring uh, my taste for mentoring, my love for passion for mentoring and also in my company also there are different departments so in fact my role as ceo of the company is to mentor my uh, colleague so that is what i have been doing uh, and uh, also i have been uh, seeing various projects because i am a uh, member of an investment investor groups also and i see what uh, projects they are doing and i was quite taken aback we were like i won't say my myself but our team taken uh, we quite pleasantly surprised to see what wonderful work our faculty was doing like they, the the projects were innovative the project i i the number of projects which are coming up starts which are coming up every faculty being announced every week hundreds of those could be but the quality which i saw the teacher what a startup should have what a project should have in terms of uh, traction in terms of benefiting the society and uh, in terms of uh, uh, what need the what something really truly true of it so i would like to congratulate each and every i would first of all thank the faculty which uh, participated in this program and i would like to congratulate each and every one of them because whoever participated they are all winners and it is just a formality because it's formality and there is a even held a contest so we have to but for me i would say everybody was top class top grade so now i am thinking how to get myself involved in this one and about fit also uh, it won't be it would be uh, very important that i can't should miss out the uh, fits role in what all has been happening how this field is so dynamic in i uh, during my time which was 1985 when i graduated innovation entrepreneurship was an absolute uh, uh, alien concept so we were only men to serve as technical people with indian multinationals or foreign multinationals we were not uh, supposed to use our brains and if any of us at that time had thought or gone to their uh, parents that uh, we want to leave this cushy job and we want to uh, get into a startup or entrepreneurship it would have been practically for having a moment of bereavement for them but now the way things are happening i must say that we have very very brave students and very very ably supported by the fit association they are doing a wonderful job they are a fantastic conduit between the alumni between uh, our students uh, and the industry in terms of innovation and entrepreneurship so and with the dr anil wali at the helm i must congratulate dr anil for doing such a wonderful job and putting so much dynamism in this and now that is the true value addition after we have done our meeting this is the true value addition which is being done imparted to the students of iit not just students of iit but this is the real value addition that we in iit are giving to the society in particular and our country in general so i would like to congratulate and thank fit and dr anil from all of us and it has been a wonderful wonderful experience and i hope that uh, every year we have uh, more uh, participation and we being 60000 odd uh, strong alumni i would like them to propagate what fit is doing and what wonderful work our faculty are doing in terms of mentorship as well as 
incubator. So that's to all of you. Thank you. Over to Natasha. Uh, thanks so much, uh, Mr. Vivek, for sharing your kind words with us. Now, uh, beginning with the uh, faculty mentored startup presentations, uh, first we have with us Professor Anurag Rathor to uh, share with us his presentation on the project Tensta. So I hope uh, you can hear me. Yes. Okay, so thanks to the Alumni Association for this opportunity. I was asked like in five minutes to uh, quickly give you a presentation on Clenster. Clenster is one of the companies that, or shouldn't say companies, startups that I am mentoring. Uh, so I'll be quite brief to make sure that we end on time. So Clenster, you know, is basically started in 2016. That's when Puneet, who is the CEO of the company, uh, he uh, had visited IIT and we discussed, you know, his, he had wanted to start this company and we decided to uh, do it through FITT. So like Vivek said, yes, FITT has played a critical role, you know, in evolving our startup ecosystem. And, and I am pretty sure we'll do uh, quite well in the coming years with the new RNI park at the campus. So anyway, so the primary uh, aspects that Clenster addresses is one is uh, hygiene. So hygiene as in creating products that would allow, you know, everyone uh, to, to, you know, practice good hygienic practices and it'll become clear as we talk about products later. And second is use of plastics or rather reducing the use of plastics. So these are the two aspects we are trying to address. Our primary products, this is the first two products that the company started with, uh, are waterless body bath and waterless shampoo. And both are intended, uh, you know, for scenarios where, you know, access to a lot of water is, is not there, you know. so. Uh, could be places where, you know, the access to water is poor. It's also uh, patients, you know, that are bedridden, uh, so they don't have access to, I mean, you can't basically give them a normal bathing. Uh, it's also, uh, you know, people in army that are, you know, uh, serving at outposts where, again, access of water is not there. So there are actually quite a few, uh, you know, people who need uh, these kind of products. And uh, our primary focus has been, so obviously innovation as in uh, creation of these products, and there are many more products after these two. Uh, and we obviously have patented, as we aggressively have been patenting to create this IP, uh, IP arsenal, which is important for a startup, and affordability. So, you know, we purposely wanted to make sure that because we knew that the people that we are targeting are, for the most part, you know, pricing would be a sensitive uh, issue. So our products, you know, are quite uh, affordable. A major partnership that we just uh, realized in the last, in the past year is with CIPLA. So CIPLA, I'm sure all of you know who CIPLA is. So this was like a co-marketing uh, partnership where they actually are now selling these two products. And the goal is, and we are kind of pretty much long uh, along the way, the 20 fold increase in, uh, in business in the, in, in the next five years. And we are kind of one year into it. And we already see a five fold increase in the sales of these products. So this, you know, this just shows that the value of what we have done. And, and of course, you know, signing this thing with Cipla is kind of a validation of what we have. Uh, the, you know, what is next? So you can just see here, and if you look at the screen here, you can see the many, many products we have. I'm not gonna cover everything because I was given five minutes, uh, but there is a whole bunch of things that, that we have already on the market. And uh, covering the plastic part, you know, what we are doing is we are, you know, going into this concentrate so that, you know, you don't have to buy 20 bottles, you know, of stuff to, uh, you know, to, to use, uh, you know, it over the year, you can buy these concentrates and then basically, you know, you can just keep diluting it and, and that's, that goes a long way. So you don't 
waste as much plastic as normally uh, we do. A uh, little bit about uh, you know I, uh, the press and uh, where we have been, and you know this is very well covered. I think next few slides will cover. Uh, so, including the mention in, in one of the presidential addresses uh, for this thing. So, I'll play a small video for you. It's not uh, audible. Yeah, I, that's, I, I'll, in the rest of time, I'll move on. But I just wanted to say that that was one of the products that the president had picked. Uh, it was a national competition and Trendsta was one of them. Uh, and then uh, this one is showing you basically our overall journey. So we started uh, in 19 is when, you know, we kind of started aggressively selling this stuff. So the revenue was around, you know, uh, as you can see, roughly three crores. Now we are around 13 crores and the way we are moving, you know, we expect to obviously uh, many fold increase it with partnerships such as with CIPTA. And we have, as of today, you know, we have 28 plus products on the market. So it has grown nicely, you know, in, in front of my eyes in the last five years. And uh, this is again, you know, the different awards it has, it has won, including, you know, from the principal scientific advisor, of course, IIT Delhi Innovator Award, and uh, from the army side, because like I said, army is a, one potential uh, end user of, uh, of these products from ET now as well as CII. So it has been you know, getting a lot of press uh, in this thing. And I'm happy to say that, you know, FI, the Clenster uh, company, because I'm often at loggerheads. I mean, Puneet, the guy who leads Clenster is basically a business guy, right? And he, he is an IM guy. And I am kind of his, I find often, you know, I'm kind of his antithesis in many, many ways because I am obviously a faculty, right? So, uh, so it's a healthy uh, team structure in that sense. But I'm happy to say that you know you can see here that uh, in the new RNI park that is coming up on the campus, Clensta is signing up to be one of the tenants there, and they are uh, they are you know they are kind of signing up for a five CR investment over the next five years in research. So this just shows that they continue to be a major you know research oriented company as well uh, so with that i think i'll end my thing so that you I, I know you have other people in line thank you uh thank you so much uh, professor rathod amazing idea very enlightening for me uh, next we have with us professor vipin kumar and i would request him to share his presentation on his project smart wearables Hello, am I audible? Yes. Yeah. Um, is my screen visible to everyone? Yes. Okay. Thank you, IITD Alumni Association, for giving me this opportunity. It's uh, it's my privilege to present my uh, uh, wonderful journey that I have been doing in the last two and three years. So uh, it's quite a roller coaster journey for me. Uh, I did my bachelor in 2009 and uh, after doing PhD, a lot of foreign exposure I acquired, but ultimately my love for IIT Delhi brought me here. And from the day one, when I joined this uh, wonderful campus in 2017, my only intention was to give back as much I can to this campus and to this country. And uh, um, I'm by heart, I am a textile engineer and scientist, and I have been working in the field of textiles and wearables. And with a lot on offered, and uh, um, if you see in last uh, um, year and this year also, there are a lot of news uh, around the country about the National Technical Textile Mission. So the Prime Minister and India, Indian government and realized the potential of uh, textiles to create a lot of social impacts in terms of creating thousand jobs and bringing values and glory to the India where, because India has been known for uh, the uh, best in textile and agriculture. And now the time has come that aggressively we should be pushing here in this field. So technical textile is one of the areas where Indian government is pushing a lot. And very recently, if you see uh, the 
concept of made in India indigenous technologies for creating technical textile products have been increasing demand uh, in the so government planned uh, for installing more than 4,000 hours uh, of uh, textile innovations and research park across the country. So looking at the prospect and the future of this country, I, uh, I have been working for last three years and two wonderful startups I have started. First was uh, uh, eTex. Uh, I started this startup with my first undergraduate students. I must say that I got all of these students because of my wonderful teaching. The first course I took, I got the best teacher award and then thereafter the journey had changed. I started getting very good students, the bachelor's students. And luckily I got the first BTEC student who was so, so motivated and so um, um, strongly committed. And because of that, I started this journey, ETEX, uh, which focuses in the field of protective textiles. This year I have started another startup, my PhD student smart wearables and advanced textiles. So briefly, I will discuss about the key projects and the impact that we have created because of these two startups. In both the startups, I have been working as a founder and director. And the main key role for me is that actually the technical mentor and taking care of R&D department. So the first one, the first company which we started was uh, in May 2019 is eTex. Our main focus was protective textile solutions. And, and the mask, uh, uh, especially in the COVID uh, pandemic time when the whole India was struggling uh, to get a uh, best quality mask at the cheapest rate. We are the one, IIT Delhi take the lead and we launched this coverage mask at the time when the price of N95 was skyrocketing. So we developed the indis this indigenous mask at a very nominal price to help the country at this needy time. We created more than 5,000 jobs uh, at that pandemic period. And uh, luckily, um, in last uh, um, one year, we have sold more than 5 million products of different types of PPEs, masks, antiviral solutions. And we have generated, it's a bootstrapped startup, no funding required by anybody, no investor. And we reached this milestone, uh, which has set up a record in this IIT campus to, from a startup to get the, this much fund, this much revenue in the first year of its commercial journey. Luckily, uh, the impact was so powerful that it, it has been uh, covered by uh, uh, Man Ki Baat in PM Modi in last year uh, because of the impact that we created uh, and helped the country in this toughest time. So uh, uh, we have been doing very great. Kavach has now become a, one of the top brand of IIT Delhi, and uh, we are generating a very good re uh, revenues across all the e-commerce platform. Uh, more than 1.5 million uh, uh, dollar revenue we have generated with a 5% of net profit. Uh, more than 40 plus corporate clients, 150 plus hospitals we have created. And this all we have created in just one year. So the journey has been very, very fantastically. Um, and it's all credit goes to the, the strong team of this startup, which is having hardly 20 to 23 years of old stu um, uh, young students, uh, uh, BTEC students and, and uh, other students who is taking this uh, um, company forward. Very recently, now we are going to move into advanced wearable solutions. We are going to launch world first data-driven solutions to compression therapy to help seniors protecting from their chronic venous ulcers and disorders. So the patent has been uh, filed and uh, we are also collaborating for this project with AIMS. And hopefully this will be the first product in the field of wearables uh, where textile is playing a very massive role. Uh, these are some of the financial projections we are expecting that in the first year, if um, we have already generated 7.5 year of uh, five crore of revenue and in the next coming years, we will be growing exponentially because of the protective fields. Uh, the second startup uh, is more sort of, uh, when I realized I started getting a lot of, lot of consultancy projects and and because the time at the time when the India is also pushing for technical textile market, uh, looking at this prospect, we started this company called Swatrick, where main focus is to provide uh, one-stop solutions for developing smart wearables and advanced textile products. We, we started this company uh, in July 2020, hardly three months old. And, and the kind of fantastic projects we are doing is a, a matter of honor for us. The first project, uh, actually, the main vision for this company is we are catalyzing innovation in textiles. We want to provide one-stop solutions 
to take care of any issues that is coming in the technical textiles in terms of uh, R&D, in terms of setting up the productions, everything. The first pro project which we are doing right now is national flag. So we found a lot of tremendous challenges in the monumental flag across the country. And it's a matter of pride for the Indian, um, every people in uh, India, India to have the right kind of fabric uh, for the uh, flag. And it was a very challenging project. We, co we are collaborating with Flag Foundation of India to upgrade the technical textiles that is used in, um, uh, in Indian flag. So we uh, we launched this drive in 2000 uh, in July 2021 and in by uh, next year 2022 uh, in 26 January we are going to give the first advanced textile product for Indian flag. The second uh, um, collaborations that we have already done with the help of FITT is uh, we are going to revamp the agriculture sector. So we are collaborating with Nisarg Agri partnership foundations where a three-year project deal has been signed. We are going to develop 18 projects uh, only focusing on developing all smart textiles related to agriculture sector, including protective textiles for farmers, protective textiles for crops, weather monitoring textile, healthcare textiles, and the project sanction is around 3.5 CR. Apart from that, we are also uh, have MOU signed with uh, uh, for the defense application with ordinance factory uh, Kanpur, where we are doing doing um, the development of body armor, especially knee uh, guard and uh, elbow guard for our soldiers. The other uh, societal project that we are also doing in Swatrick is uh, with the help of uh, a foundations. We are taking the um, we are recycling the army uniforms, making it more durable, uh, all the used uniforms of army, we are getting supply from uh, with the help of foundations. And we are upgrading the fabric quality, it's uh, dyeing capabilities, and we are making very useful products. So because of that, we are able to generate more than 100 jobs at this moment uh, in, the, in the center. So uh, these are some of the financial projection I'm expecting from Swatrick. So the main aim for having the Swatrick is to provide one-step solutions for all technical textiles related problems. And now we have the capability and resources and the testing facilities uh, within the campus, as well as we have the prototyping facilities where we will be able to make uh, all sort of uh, product development related to technical textiles. So uh, with this, um, this is what we, I have to present in the field of textiles and variables, which is the future. And I'm very much optimistic that in next five to 10 years, this is the field which will bring lots and lots of jobs to this country and it will make a long lasting impact uh, in the Indian economy. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Professor Vipin Kumar. Uh, glad to hear from you. Next, we have with us uh, uh, Professor uh, Samrat Mukhopadhyay. Uh, I am glad to welcome him because I was his one of his students. I have done numerous course under him, three to mention. Uh, glad to see you at the same forum, sir. And I request you to present uh, the presentation for your project, Fibriosis. Thank you so much, Natasha. Very nice to see you as well. Uh, so initially I was struggling. I, I felt that I've seen you, but then, you know, like, Okay, so let me try to share my screen. Is this visible to all of you? Yes. Okay, so at the onset, uh, my heartiest thanks to the Alumni Association for uh, thinking about me, about Fabiosis. I'm really thankful. <laughs> so this was like uh, spearheaded by Yati, Yati Gupta, uh, who is uh, just three years back, he is a pass out from IIT Delhi from engineering physics. And, uh, but he started working right from the time when he was in third year. So my association with him has been for very long. And uh, he, he, is a very, he was a very different kind of student because when he started this, uh, I felt that he's not from textiles, so whether he'd be able to do it or not, but I found him that uh, he was so interested, apart from being a very intelligent child, what I found that he was so interested to learn and apply himself that he did a fabulous job. And I'm very humbled to share our journey so far. 
so uh, it started with interacting with the doctors of aims where the problem of hospital acquired infections are really high where you know like a patient goes for one problem and then acquire some other problems and come come back so it's popularly known as hai and uh, that is when it when it started so we wanted to uh, uh, produce infection proof fabrics for protection and most importantly uh, prevent cross con contaminations so what we developed was a broad broad spect spectrum fabric which destroys more than 99.9% of the pathogens so bacteria was tested and viruses were still developing and uh, the best part is that the one one we developed and has been tested in bangalore in the uh, national virological lab so it showed that within 25 minutes it has been very effective so that was that was an amazing but we are still doing more trials so that we are more sure and uh, we aim to uh, do antiviral coveralls gowns infection proof uniforms and infection proof bed sheets so that that those were the main targets so we didn't think to do too many things but concentrate on few things and do them well so that was our idea so the usp has been that as i said that kills to 99.9% of the pathogens and uh, the functionality can be retained for the life span of the fabric please note life span of the fabric uh, is that because typically after 30 to 40 washes uh, hospitals would not be using a fabric whether it is a bed sheet so life span of a fabric is under coats so that's very important and uh, we always thought that it should be an affordable material so whatever technology we are we are trying to build is affordable both in terms of fabric uh, the chemicals and the technological parameters what we use so that the ultimate end product can be affordable so that were that had been one of our targets natural comfort to the skin uh, along with toxicity that was another two things which which we try to concentrate and i was very particular that uh, often we, we have finishes which are launched early but ultimately we found them to be slightly toxicological in nature so we should be very careful about that and uh, another important thing i would like to quote is like the bulk manufacturing does not require specialized machineries uh, in contrast to many of the processes which need very specialized machinery so if we are able to develop this then a very normal a small scale textile industry also if they have the know how they will be able to do this so uh, majority of the machineries exist in a normal textile industry so that has been the whole uh, outlook so far so one patent has been this thing so yeah so and in the in the media so we have been covered very well so media was very positive and we were very careful about what we are claiming because uh, that's very tricky because once you do something very good then you know like they would have tall claims and whatever they publish may not be exactly what you're doing or they may they may be actually trying to uh, 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 actually multiply what you have done so we are very careful and it was uh, this thing in covered in times now in a full video coverage where we uh, try to explain what we're doing and that got very positive reviews and in iit uh, it was covered and several other newspapers like economic times indian express and it carried a special uh, uh, coverage in times of india education where the whole story was covered uh, for the startup so we were very humbled by this and uh, this has also been recognized by the office of the principal scientific advisor and in fact it was uh, it was long time it was flashing as the first one of the first two technologies developed by the office of the principal scientific advisor and it's still there in their website which is very uh, uh, honorable mention for us and iit delhi website also covered the whole story so that was this thing and this is a patent and uh, so it has been a combined work from all of us so so happy that we have got the patent uh, and in very short time because we could defend it very well 
and the element of novelty could have been established very well from our side so so happy to share this so quickly i'll say my role because i think that's very important so right from the very beginning i used to discuss long time with with rati the research approach because you know like that is something which which i found slightly missing so that is where i could i could feel that i i can really contribute and uh, also my role has been that how it can be really applied in te uh, technology because yati's concepts have been more in fundamental chemistry and physics and i plugged in uh, in the application side because you know like being in industry for for some time and doing so many projects so how exactly it can be applied so that it it can be done well so and providing an interface with the industry so that was my third role where we have been talks with many industries who are ready to take up this but we are slightly delaying it because of certain small issues and uh, once we want to uh, uh, i mean you know like give some technology then we want that it is full proof so we are slightly delaying that part and the fourth thing which i'll say is very important from my part that we have a long term vision for the research and also uh, have the tenets of honesty and integrity in the research process which i think is very important and often we miss on our part so i have been continuously discussing this part with yati that we do not we should not be failing uh, on these tenets uh, as a long term goal so we may be slightly slow in our achievements but we should ensure that especially when we are trying to contribute in a medical field we should be very careful about that so we are thankful to iit delhi uh, the director professor anurag rathore has been so helpful dr anil wali of fit who has been immensely helpful uh, throughout the process department of biotechnology pfizer and a uh, good amount of csr funding and the very prestigious big grant which we got for us uh, so that's all from my side thank you so much again for giving me an opportunity Uh, thank you so much, sir, and uh, congratulations. Moving on to our uh, next uh, startup, uh, we have with us Professor Ratnamal Chatterjee, Project Boat Lab. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen. Let's see. and you can uh, see my screen right yes okay so uh good evening everyone and i'm very happy to be here i would like to th uh, thank the alumni association for picking up this project and i was actually quite surprised when i got a call in the morning from mr vivek batra uh so thank you i have quickly tried to put together the uh, things about boat lab boat lab dynamics uh a startup that has been incubated at iit delhi i am ratnamala chatterjee professor in the physics department and i must mention here i was very happy to hear that samrat mukhopadhyay's project also has an engineering physics student at the helm of it which is what really pleases me so here the student involved is tanmay bunkar and i must tell you that this picture i got it from internet because this is what tanmay reminds me tanmay was very young btech student when he wanted to do his project he wanted to join the lab join my lab and the reason behind that was we actually one of our research interests is in microwave absorbing materials that are very useful as emi uh, like basically shielding of emi emi shielding and also it's a part of stealth technology that is uh, for the defense use actually when they want to steal their different 
aerial vehicles, they paint it with these materials. And you want to have basically radar cross section uh, to be nine, basically, they don't want any reflection from the aeroplane and things like that. So Tanmay told me that this, this is the reason he wants to work with this because his interest is in un, uh, I mean, unmanned aerial vehicles. And my first introduction to the, his UAV flight was way back in 2012 when uh, a handful of faculty members were invited by Tanmay and some BTEC engineering physics students for this demonstration. We were very happy that the student is really, really so enthusiastic. And I was impressed I would say by the gleam of his eyes as he looked at his maneuvered UAV flying in the sky. So when after his BTEC, he came and told me that he wants to start this startup. I was a bit surprised, but it was nonetheless something which I uh, expected somehow from him. So we all basically started with whatever help he needed and wherever he required help, I went around with it. And I would say that mostly, I think it is his family. It is his parents whom Tanmay will be really proud of or really indebted to because they allowed him to experiment with his ideas when India didn't even allow it. You know, the government, there was no funding for this government. Didn't, this was not an activity which was allowed. So I am sure Tanmay is very, very proud and very indebted to his parents for this kind of liberty that was given to him. He is the elder son of the two brothers. So from that point of the view also, I would think it was really, I used to be surprised when I asked him, because it took him some time to really bring it to a level where it is today. So uh, this I have taken actually, uh, I have, I mean, Bot Lab Dynamics Tanmay has actually sent me a PPT, but I didn't use it because I didn't think I will have enough time. So I just thought that I will prepare something with my own ideas, what I have. So I have taken it from their website, you can see, this is what this is Tanmay, and this is their Facebook taken from their Facebook page where you can see Tanmay and Anuj both are engineering physics students, and I would say Anuj actually started with a job through campus placement, and Tanmay didn't. Tanmay was so sure about his own venture that he went ahead and he continued with what he wanted to do. And I remember the day we went to the fit provided space in which we had that small little ceremony of Nariel Porna and which I did for them. And it was really nice to have participated with them. And I, it has been really a nice journey to see them growing. Now, let me just say that Botlab Dynamics, a startup that is incubated at IIT Delhi is practically the first company in India to have achieved this capability. What is the innovation that went into it? Well, the BotLab team has built all the necessary components, both hardware and software, such as the flight control, the brain, which is basically the brain of the do uh, drones, and uh, all the controllers. The algorithms required to make the controls is also developed in-house, which is their biggest, I think, success point. So current innovations of drone lights up, lights shows has actually positioned Botlab to have some uh, private industries or even management companies uh, to develop completely new markets. Uh, I mean, I, I will show some PPPs from them, which will, um, uh, which will, and I think they had a uh, show here also in IIT, uh, maybe a couple of weeks back or a month back or so. So it's a beautiful sight to see. And 
For the defense applications, BotLab has a strategic tie up with LNT because LNT is a leading player in defense sector. They uh, to build unique technology solutions, drone swarming for Indian Army, India Navy, and Air Force. There are many things which I don't want to say here, but I get to hear from Tanmay, and it really pleases me when he tells me that um, he got a call from uh, National Science Advisors Office, and where they tried to figure out that this uh, this drone which has fallen in Amritsar, they so I mean he and his team went and identified certain things. These are all informations which are really uh, confidential, but I would like to mention this because what I want to say through this is whatever efforts Tanmay has put into this company has already come to the notice of the right sector of people. And that is the pleasure that I have. So they also have intellectual property on the entire drone management system. I mean, how it is built and how it is controlled. BotLab has built its own electronic speed controller, precision GPS, and the flight controller. So these are the most important components that are required to control the speed and how, how would you position your drone to find the exact location and to pilot the system. So along with the hardware, they have also developed and created an, an advanced flight planner, which is the software part for making formation of numerous drones. Till now, they have demonstrated about 250 drones flying on the sky for making different formations. And in order to do this, they also had to develop a unique velocity-based swarming algorithm. Now, I'm happy to announce here that uh, basically uh, during this beating retreat, uh, they have been invited by government of India to make a uh, presentation and to have this uh, drone, um, like some sort of, I'm sure you will also see, all of us will see some sort of presentation on the, on the beating retreat day. So uh, the, their last year's revenue was 131 lakhs, which is 1.31 crore. And how is the future? In 2022, BotLab is entering in this media and entertainment area also. And as I said, for this beating retreat process, actually they will be controlling thousand drones, which is a huge thing. And it's very difficult. So, but they are really, uh, struggling with it and they are going to achieve it. The revenue projections for 2023 is of 50 CR and following that year, their projection is of 100 CR. I really wish them best of luck so that they can do it. This is one of the first paid drone light show which they had. And basically they have tried to, this is last minute slide which Tanmay sent me. So these are a couple of them. I can show here that Tanmay Bunkar, the co-founder was awarded, awarded by Prime Minister's Award in 2019. And also they ha there have been many mentions in newspapers. I, uh, there is one in TOI, but I don't know why he didn't send me that. But you can say, you can already see that. I mean, as I said, they have got the notice of the right kind of people, those who can give them more and more and better and better opportunity. So thank you for your time and patient hearing. And I will end here. And I wish them all the best for coming years when I would like to see them touching whatever highest dreams that they have. Thank you so much. All the best. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Professor Chatterjee. Next, we have with us Professor Ravi Krishna Ilongovan. Uh, and I request him to share his presentation. Uh, on Do the, I have to unshare?
message so uh, thank you all I, i really had a pleasure listening to so much wonderful stories in iit delhi and uh, uh, i am actually passed out from 2004 from biochemical engineering and biotechnology department and uh, so when i went outside of iit i was uh, uh, mostly thinking about uh, research i never thought i would actually come back and become a faculty in iit delhi so i joined back as a faculty in 2010 and it was really pleasure to be back in the campus and uh, it brings out all the good things that i have gained from here so um, slowly uh, my journey has been like we wanted to build uh, uh, technologies and methods in the lab itself so basically i am a biophysicist by training so we wanted to build microscopy uh, in iit delhi for essentially uh, basic research uh, problems slowly i learned that there are many uh, interesting challenges in india which we do not have uh, in homegrown solutions so where we picked up with some colleagues in iit i would like to name professor vivekananda parmal professor shalini gupta so we three uh, or a cup of coffee decided to you know let's try to apply these optical solutions into a solution into a healthcare problem so we decided to find uh, diagnostics for infectious disease and uh, slowly along the journey when i started uh, working on this problems um, we had two of our own graduates saurabh singh and vikas pande who just graduated around 2011 and 12 they all had uh, good mnc jobs they came to know that that there is a uh, kind of a uh, application oriented project which we are starting and they quit their job and joined as a phd student in my lab so that's been like 2013 14 and uh, since then it's been about 6 years so what you are going to hear is about a company valitude primus that is co-founded by me and two of uh, uh, the uh, students and uh, so this company is named as valitude primus healthcare systems and uh, essentially our idea was to uh, create technologies for the uh, underserved people so when you look at this things that if you want to bring technologies to uh, say primary healthcare center there are uh, unique challenges that you are hardware is intensive so you needed certain kind of infrastructure to do medical diagnostics and the level of knowledge that is required for operating these kind of technologies were also very high so you need a trained manpower and uh, most of the diagnostics technologies has been actually developed in western world so that means that the affordability range was also much beyond uh, for the rural settings so this is where uh, we wanted to develop products and we realized that these are systems where you, you need a deep science when you want to fundamentally change the way that the diagnostics is done so you needed to do a long long research uh, times and over the time we have actually four five patents that has been filed and uh, this is not only filed in india we realized that these technologies could be also useful outside of india and uh, and we are actually doing much of the development 
and manufacturing and clinical validation. So in the medical technology uh, side, there is a uh, valley of depth is a little bit longer because you just need to also uh, prove it efficacy in the clinical systems. And uh, that takes a good number of academic network also. You need to have a network of hospitals to validate your technologies. So we are fortunate to build these three verticals. That is basically uh, science patent-based technologies. And we have this vertical integration of development, manufacturing, and validation and deployment. And we network of academic, which is going to help us in this process. So I'm going to uh, tell about three problem statements and what we are trying to do about it. So the first solution is called Autogene. And um, essentially, this is uh, uh, where you have any kind of uh, infectious disease symptoms. Let it be COVID, where you have like coughing or you can have a fever. So you need to identify the disease using uh, something called as a molecular diagnostics. We are now, PCR test is very familiar. All of us have actually uh, at least done once the PCR systems. Now, if you see this, this PCR technology is available only in the tertiary care. You can actually process this diagnostics only if you have a, a microbiology laboratory and trained manpower. So if you want to operate this in a rural settings, you want to basically minimize any of the infrastructure and also completely automate it. So we have actually developed a, a kind of a cartridge based technology. And this is basically automating the whole processing of sample to the results. And if you see uh, internationally, the number of companies which is able to do some solutions like this, there are only one or two. And these are actually uh, quite very well funded and uh, have a very long journey also has been uh, input. And uh, the first disease that we wanted to set it up and scale it up is for tuberculosis. So tuberculosis, um, uh, you know that uh, India is uh, one of the very uh, largest presence of the disease burden is in India. And uh, the challenge in managing the TB, TB is that we are not identifying all the patients. So today we have good treatments, but we are not able to catch all the patients. So to diagnose them at the rural market, uh, you can see that there is a huge market is there and the deployability solution is what was lacking. And uh, this is what we have developed. Uh, this is basically a single cartridge based uh, uh, nucleic acid detection platform where it doesn't require any kind of a trained person or additional infrastructure. And you basically plug and play, you add your cartridge and sample. In three hours, you basically get the results. And this can be deployed at the rural setting, primary healthcare centers. And currently, partially, this has been funded by uh, India Health Fund. And uh, we are actually uh, looking forward for the scale up and the validation studies. The second problem, uh, this was actually our, one of the things we started working on, that is basically microbial infection. So if you uh, see um, any kind of an infection, you take consume antibiotics. So if you have fever, we take up antibiotics and it's expected to be relieved the, uh, of the infection. But what's happening today is that these microbes are actually gaining resistance to this antibiotics and you don't know which antibiotic to use. And to uh, identify the right antibiotics, there are these kind of technologies by companies like BD and Bacteriolat from uh, 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 Biomery. So these are two major corporations which have this completely automated sol uh, solutions, which takes about 40 hours, 48 hours to identify which is the antibiotic to use. So there are two challenges. One is that it is a, again an infrastructure intensive, manpower intensive, and the time taken for the diagnostics also 48 hours. So to circumvent this one, we have actually come up with this two-step technologies, which is we call as a IMC squared IAST. So this is an immunomagnetic cell capture system and instant antibiotic T susceptibility test. So the first device you can see here that will basically process the blood sample and uh, enrich it about four to five hours. And you can identify the disease positive or negative at four hours. And in additional four hours, you can actually confirm which is the susceptibility profile. 
And so this means in the same day you can identify there is a confirmatory infection and what is the right antibiotics to prescribe. And again, if you see this uh, instruments are designed in a way that they are robust and deployable and doesn't require additional hardware and manpower. So again, this has been actually going through the medical regulatory pathway. Uh, some initial uh, stages have been completed. So the last one, uh, the microscopy. I mean, this is the one which I, I started with my uh, lab. So you use microscopy for various kinds of applications, uh, including the tuberculosis, malaria diagnostics. And today there is a, a manual, uh, these samples are processed and you identify based on the uh, operator. And we have actually uh, uh, want to completely automate these microscopes and use AI-based algorithms to basically identify the disease without any kind of a trained manpower. Again, we have a hardware which is we have built it, which is called as a uh, face it. So this is basically a combination of microscopy with the AI platforms that can enable to uh, detect the disease without any kind of uh, uh, trained manpower. So essentially what we have gained in the last uh, uh, six years is that we have actually learned to put together this mechatronics hardware with biology. So you see that there is a, a lot of mechanical fabrication systems that we have uh, uh, tried to put together the ecosystem and uh, combining with the kind of right kind of biological solutions we have uh, diagnostic solutions that we can actually be deployed at the primary healthcare center levels. And uh, currently, uh, I mean, uh, this is all under different types of uh, validation studies. We have some of them which are basically uh, uh, axillary because since we had this mechatronics expertise, we ended up also this those oxygen concentration shortage. So we developed the oxygen concentrator that is currently under sales. Uh, we have this again in a small automated microscopes that we are actually already uh, being sold to few places. And again, there is a, another system which is called as a, a CTEF, which is a, something that you can add it onto existing microscope and convert it into a fluorescent system. So you can, these are products that we have actually developed and they are actually uh, doesn't require a medical regulation. So being directly supplied to various agencies. So um, I think uh, we have been uh, extremely uh, supported by the ecosystem. Since uh, the beginning, uh, whenever we have actually went out and asked for a funding or a support, we have been always generously supported and, uh, uh, and IIT ecosystem and also the, in general, the ecosystem has been extremely supportive. So we are very happy that uh, we have been uh, given this opportunity and working on this kind of problems. And uh, I thank uh, IIT Alumni Association for giving me this opportunity to share our story. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Professor Ravi Krishna. Uh, thank you for finding time for us. And uh, now, uh, unfortunately, uh, Dr. Subarao is unavailable to join us today, but in his absence, I would request our president, Mr. Kalpain Shukla, to please announce the Suruchi Award for Research. Thank, thanks, Natasha. Uh, this is with reference to Professor D. Subarao, who recently retired from Chemical Engineering Department at IIT Delhi. Uh, Dr. Subarao had uh, been in academics for nearly 35 years and therefore his love for academics and excellence in uh, research work particularly is reflected in his commitment to announce an award which is called Subarao Research Excellence in Chemical Engineering. So in short form, you could possibly announce it at your ICHE award. It will be an yearly award for best PhD thesis in chemical engineering at IIT Delhi. I would also love to read out a couple of slides from the presentation that we had received from Dr. Subarao. First is to win this award and his suggestions, be honest and competitive to succeed in life. To succeed, 
you need to be fast complete your phd in less time need to be knowledgeable learn from others work to broaden your thinking and also share tell them about your work be an achiever publish your papers in reputed high impact journals patent a product that is needed by industry or the society you have a chance to reach what you aim at you need to chase yourself to win this award and he defines this excellence in his own way what is excellence for him and he says aim to be excellent what is perceived as excellence would be phd completed in lesser period of time and he claims it should be less than 3 years at least one paper published per year of research in a high impact journal at least one paper presented per year in reputed conferences and at least one patent registered every year so summarily you achieve excellence by your own intelligence and hard work by competing against your own self and doing better every time setting your own target and achieving it within less than the targeted time so with this we are very happy to suggest that professor subarao has instituted this award and we wish that students pursuing phd in chemical engineering will try to aspire to win this award thank you very much uh thank you so much uh, mr kalpen shukla now i would like to welcome dr anil wali for the announcement of the startup awards okay uh, very good evening to all uh, the alumni association members and also my colleagues faculty colleagues very happy to be here uh, well i think it is it's given who all are the winners so whether i announce them or not it's actually material but what is i think uh, maybe a little important or maybe for me to reiterate what i have been at least doing so in various forums and that is uh, the the importance of the innovation ecosystem uh, that has been created at iit delhi Uh, it was because of these initiatives at the at the institute if i have to put it in in a more formal terms from from the time fitt the institutes industrial foundation was created way back in 1992 and then uh, uh, an intellectual property policy was adopted at the institute i think uh, some i think i i believe the earliest by any academic institution or university in the country so that itself is a matter of great pride and then uh, further uh, going further from there that was in the year 99 2000 financial year of 99 2000 when uh, iit delhi well when i say iit delhi it was actually fitt which was taking all the initiatives of of establishing uh, the incubator here so whether it was establishment of fitt or establishment of uh, of the incubator for the institute in general it was a sort of a leap of faith because we hardly had precedents in the indian education sector obviously the institute the visionaries at the institute thought well i think this is the way forward and 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 subsequently over the years it has been proved that the steps or the initiatives which iit delhi took were in the very right direction now uh, when when we talk of uh, no it was not just the incubator i think today we have several incubators on the on the, on the campus and and not just that we are not stopping at that because uh, we have to move forward so what is the next platform that we are talking about the 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 new thing that i think you must have actually been following professor rao's uh, professor ramgopal rao's uh, posts that is we are in the process of establishing uh, a research park on on the campus uh, and uh, if my original blueprint is is correct so it's not one or two but it's going to be three research parks at the various campuses of iit delhi in which is uh, anyway uh, going to be a matter of great pride for every member of iit delhi community past or present now uh, uh, the thing is when we talk more uh, uh, narrowly if you may 
allow me to do that in terms of the incubation exercise, because incubation is, is, is a part of a larger innovation ecosystem. We are, in, uh, we are talking of technology commercialization, we are talking of entrepreneurship, startups, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but uh, from, from, the faculty, from the faculty context, you please understand there are more than 100 faculty members at IIT Delhi who have been formally associated with the incubated startups at IIT Delhi. I'm not talking of the, the other ones which have not been, which have not gone through the formal structure of incubation and more than hundred of them formally. When I say formally, means either they are equity shareholders, they are either advisors or maybe even board members to these startup companies. And you actually heard few of them today. Uh, now, uh, it has been articulated, uh, not in the last four or five years, but even before that, that the involvement of faculty scientists in, in the, in the uh, whole, uh, technology commercialization process, whether through startups or through licensing is extremely important if you want to actually strengthen the, the deep technology base in the country and no better way or no so, uh, shorter way than to actually initiate a startup company and, and bring, your, bring your work, bring your knowledge, bring your technology uh, to the marketplace. The reason I'm saying so is because we have some tremendous uh, examples from the top universities in US or, or the Western world. As a matter of fact, I do normally talk in my regular lectures, uh, though they are not academic lectures though, uh, about, about some very ex fascinating examples of great technology platforms which have been created by faculty members amongst others in the university systems. So that itself is, is a huge uh, you know, inspiration, a huge story to actually look up to, uh, which, which has to be replicated uh, maybe in ac every academic institution, um, much more than uh, much more in, in IIT Delhi, because we have been pioneers of sorts in establishing formal innovation structures in, in the country. And I'm sure going forward, we'll be able to build on this tremendous base and, and with, the, with the necessary support in both in terms of policy framework at the institute level as also at the government level, I think we should do much, much better from where we are today. And of course, that is how we should look at. Now, in terms of the, the winners, of course, well, you have them all uh, who made the presentations today, but the list before me shows three names. Uh, and then of course, there are two others. Uh, the first is of uh, Professor Bipin Kumar, who represents smart variables. Uh, if I may add here that uh, when I said uh, uh, more than 100 faculty scientists have been involved in startups, incubated startups at IIT Delhi, uh, few of them are, are the ones who have actually led, actually initiated a startup and have involved their students or alumni in the process. In many others, it's the other way around because, because uh, engagement or having faculty uh, members as, as part of the startup is mandatory at IIT Delhi as part of its policy framework. And the second name, uh, of course, which has been uh, there is uh, Professor Samrat Mukhopadhyay representing Fabiosis. And uh, of course, the third is our uh, Professor Ravi Krishna Elongovan, who is actually in a really deep tech startup called Valitude Primus. And, uh, and the other two names, uh, I don't know the order, but of course, these are the top three names which have been given, but other, there so, has to be mention of uh, other Professor two names. Professor, yeah. Professor, may I interrupt here? I mean, uh, there's, sure. a, there's a list which is uh, on our WhatsApp. If you can read in the correct order, please. Okay. So now, now I have got the list. So if I have to uh, recap, uh, the first prize of rupees 50,000 goes to Professor Bipin Kumar, that is smart variables. And the second prize, which is worth rupees 30,000, goes to Professor Ravi Krishna Elangovan. Thank you, sir. And uh, I'm sorry for, because I think I have just received it a few minutes ago. And the third prize of rupees 20,000 has been awarded to Professor Anurag Rathore of Project Cleanstar. And uh, the Promising Ideas Awards of rupees 10,000 each have been given to Professor Ratnamala Chatterjee of Botlab and Professor Samrat Mukhupadhyay of Fabiosis. So I'm, I'm, uh, please, uh, 
excuse me if uh, I think I raised uh, expectations in, in the order in which I spoke the names first, but I think uh, anyway, all five of them are doing a great job. Uh, while uh, we, we take great pleasure in announcing these names, but the real winners are decided not by us, but by the market. And that is the ultimate determinant of the real winner. So no matter what we do here, because it's based on our assessments and our assessments may be correct, may be spot on or may be way off the mark. So let us leave it to the market to determine who are the real winners in life. With this, I would, I would hand over the, the proceedings back to Alumni Association. And thanks very much for inviting me and uh, be part of your function. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Anil Wali. And congratulations to all the winners. Uh, now I would request uh, Secretary of IIT Delhi Illumina Association, Mr. Rakesh Bansal, to please give a vote of thanks. Thank you, Natasha. Uh, uh, good morning and good evening to everybody. It has been a spectacular evening today where we saw very, very eminent alumni personalities uh, sharing the dias and uh, sharing the journey with the alumni. I would like to thank Professor Sirohi, Professor Gupta, Professor Sinha, Professor Mossam uh, for being here with us and uh, uh, making this uh, evening such a wonderful one for, for all of us. Um, I would like to congratulate them, all of them once again for the, for the, for the presentation today. Um, as a matter of fact, it has been an honor to IIT Delhi Alumni Association to present the award to such esteemed personalities uh, who have been our alumni themselves and they have done extremely well in their, in their own uh, uh, spheres of life, of uh, career. Uh, how we wish that uh, we could have met personally and uh, handed over the awards to all the uh, <clears throat> awardees and uh, they, which would have given us a chance to meet them personally, but, uh, but for the COVID situation and the of course, the distance, many, many are uh, sitting across seven seas. Uh, nevertheless, uh, thank you for being here. And uh, thank you, Professor Pan, for being here and uh, handing over the uh, faculty awards to the uh, awardees today. <clears throat> we also had a great uh, second session on the uh, faculty-driven public or mentored startups today. Uh, ITD, of course, is, a, is the top most institute today to uh, uh, produce startups. Uh, but today, uh, it was really heartening to note uh, how uh, uh, faculty is actually driving all the uh, startups. I mean, while well, the students or, or the uh, the promoters they they walk away with, with all the uh, cakewalk, uh, it is actually the many of the startups which are behind the success of, of the many startups. And uh, today's actually event was to felicitate and honor such faculty who have been doing a wonderful job uh, uh, to make this happen across the, uh, across the startup ecosystem in the NIIT Delhi. And as Professor Bali said, uh, all these startups are actually uh, supported by, by uh, faculty somewhere. And uh, uh, this is the first year time that we have uh, instituted uh, this award. And we look forward to more participation in the in the, uh, time, in the years to follow. And uh, this, this will be something uh, really exciting uh, where we can actually felicitate our uh, esteemed faculty who are who are driving driving all this uh, 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 startups. It was it has been really tough for us to really choose the best one. Yeah, of course, all our all our have been very doing very very good job and. Uh, very rightly mentioned by Professor Wally again, that ultimately the market will decide who is the best one. Uh, we can only make our guesses. Some, some, some of course are doing very well, or they are already established uh, one in the market. Some are in the inception stage itself, but they are, they are nevertheless, they are very, very promising. And uh, uh, we will leave the, the time to decide uh, the course of, for, the, for the course of action. Uh, but uh, and nevertheless, uh, I mean, all the startups are uh, doing a wonderful job, and congratulations to all the winners of today's startup competition, uh, and uh, working towards an Atmanirbhar Bharat. Uh, 
just to say, I mean, although the awards have been given, but money is just a just a token of appreciation for the great uh, work by done by them. The money part may, may look like a pittance, but it is to be considered as a recognition from on the part of the uh, alumni association. Like I said, this is the first time that we have instituted this award, and uh, we hope to uh, go ahead uh, further on this. And uh, uh, <clears throat> I'm sure we will have a very very active participation in times to come. Uh, so. Uh, Thank you, Professor Rathavar, Professor Dr. Vipin Kumar, Professor Samrat Mukhopadhyay, Professor Langavan, Professor Ratnamala uh, for making a presentation. And, and of course, all other uh, startup entries, we had, we had a uh, uh, large number of entries, but uh, we had uh, only invited uh, self, uh, shortlisted uh, few because of uh, the time and all that. And uh, the top few that uh, our panel had recommended, those, those were only invited. So we, we thank all the uh, 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 participants uh, for being a part of this event. Um, thank you, Professor uh, Wali, for being for gracing this occasion today and speaking about uh, uh, the startup. And and uh, we have been a great uh, force behind driving the uh, startup ecosystem and the and the FITT is of course your baby. So uh, thank you for being. Uh, such a great uh, driving force for everybody. Uh, so with that, I draw close to the uh, three-day uh, alumni ITD, alumni faculty day that we had uh, covering various uh, events. Uh, and, uh, and of course, thank you all the all the participants and all the audience and everybody. Uh, have, have a good day. Bye. Thank you. All the very Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks everyone for joining. Bye-bye. Have a great evening. Thanks, Natasha. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderfully organized. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.